Okay, so now we're going to go into the portfolio. So we're going to detail and show you what products are included in, uh, in the battery box family. So the, the first one, the, the big, the big, uh, big seller, the most po popular products are the high voltage systems. The sector is moving, moving towards high voltage systems because they, they work at a, at a voltage closer to solar systems. So they, have a ten, they tend to be a higher efficiency systems. And at the same time, it allows you to work with uh, smaller components, uh, lower cost components. So overall, the system cost tends to be lower with high voltage systems by at the same time offering you uh, a higher efficiency. So in, in this, uh, this side of the family, we have two products. is the HVS and the HVM. They, they're both quite similar in the amount of capacity per module. So the H, HVS uh, will be 2.5 kilowatt hours per module. The HVM will be uh, 2.76 kilowatt hours uh, per module. The HVS is a 100 volt module. And when you put them together, you are increasing the voltage because they are, these batteries are in series. So you can choose to have from uh, 200 volts, uh, 541 kilowatt hour. This is the, the small system on the left hand side to the largest with 500 volts. So five modules, the HBS 12.8 kilowatt hours. And you can have up to three of them in parallel. And in, the, in terms of the H, HVM, so you can have I start with minimum three three modules because each of them provide is a is a 51 volt module so 100, 150 volts for the smallest unit up to uh, four, 400 volts in the largest system with eight modules so these will be 22 kilowatt hours and you can have up to three of them in parallel and a question that i normally get uh, would be <clears throat> how to different uh, well how how to choose which uh, are, as you see, the specifications look uh, quite similar. So how to choose in which situation one or the other. So once you you put them, you, you think of practical terms and you put them together with an inverter. So most high voltage inverters will be uh, working 20 to 25 amps. So if we put together the, the voltage of the of each of the stacks, this is an HVS system to uh, multiply by 25 uh, amps uh, for for uh, the input of an inverter. You end up having, in terms of power, for a 5.1 kilowatt hour system, it will give you 5.1 kilowatts of power. A 7.7 kilowatt hours, it will give you 7.7. .7. So these are essentially these are one C batteries. So what stand out and stands out immediately is that you are getting a very high power for the amount of capacity of a of a system. So the the HVS system would allow you to with a very small with a very very small starting point provide you a very high level of power. However, if if you're looking at at homes that have very large loads or want to be able to power a electric vehicle for several hours, you'll see that you end up being a bit limited with the amount of capacity. So if you want to look into larger systems, that's where the HVM comes in. It does start immediately uh, or from the very beginning for, uh, with a, a larger capacity with a smaller system being 8.3 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, but it allows you to grow much higher to up to 22 kilowatt hours with a single tower. And you can have th even three of them in parallel being possible to have 66 kilowatt hours in, the, in a single system. Of course, the, the trade-off here is the unit you have is a low, lower power per kilowatt hour system, so a lower C rate system. However, uh, once you go to the large systems, you see that you can still achieve a fairly fairly high level of uh, of total of kilowatts. Uh, <clears throat> have you, as you've seen, we have a lot of different combinations. The number of batteries you can put in it will change the the number, uh, the voltage of the system. Uh, you can work with many different inver inverter partners. So that's why the, there's a document in both the BYD and the EFT website called compatibility list. Take a look in in here because it will tell you which inverters work. With, they can work with which batteries because I'll I'll give you an example here. Okay, here you go. So I go into the combination with SMA. You'll see that 
In the case of SMA, for example, the, sun, the Sunny Boy storage cannot work at the 500 volts uh, unit. So the, H, the large HV, HVS, the five module HVS doesn't work with the uh, SMA. And also depending on the model that you are using, you might not be able to work with the small one, the smallest one or the smallest HVM due to, again, the voltage range. So take a look at this before uh, uh, finishing your design, just to confirm that the, the combination of inverter uh, slash battery is is work. It is a. Oh, sorry. It is a <clears throat> a compatible one. So once you've uh, you've received your units, you go to site. The first step is that uh, that EC cable less assembly. So it's one of the main characteristics of the of the battery box that this was uh, pioneered about four four years ago. Is the fact that this is, is this modular clipping system that uh, all, all the, you don't need any more any cables in between the the modules for them to work uh, <clears throat> an important part is, is that the hvs and the hvm look very similar so just make sure that you are of course the, the boxes are differently labeled they have different colors uh, but also the product itself would have a single mark for the hvs or two marks for the hvm because they cannot be mixed together uh, this is uh, it, it won't cause it won't cause any issue in the product itself. It won't damage the, the product, but you, the BCU and the, which is the intelligence inside the system will recognize that it will not let it work. Once you have assembled the system, the next uh, the next area is the connection the connection area. One thing that we have implemented in the new battery box uh, premium is it's an air, just a single area of connections, which is the one you see on the right hand side. So first of all, you open the cover, and when you as soon as you open the cover, you will not be able to switch on the battery. So for safe, uh, safety reasons, the, the system switch will trip every time you try to, uh, to lift it with the cover open. Only once you close the cover back again, you will be able to switch on the battery. And once you open the cover, you'll see in this area is everything that the installer needs to do. So you have the top left hand side, you have the communication. In the middle, you have the internet connection. The bottom left, you have the grounding. On the right hand side is the power connections. So as, a, oh, as you probably imagined, first of all, always the grounding to make sure that the cover of the, of the unit is at the same, at the same potential as the grounding of the, of the house. Once you have it connected that, you can connect the, the communication cables. So this is, re, this is a redundant system. So we have uh, two options to provide to you. So in the case that you have a different preference of how you want to do the communication, or if you have an issue with one of the options, you have the other option to, to test. So you can connect either the, the pins uh, one by one. This is the communication is going to the inverter. So in the quick installation guide are also in the inverter manual, you'll be able to see which pins of, from, the, from the inverter communication port go to which pins in the battery. And then if you want to have a, a neater option, you can crimp it and then use an RJ, RJ45 port, one of the two, either if it can or is an RS485. And the next point, very, very important, is this uh, Ethernet connection to the remote server. So Right now, there's only one option to connect to the remote server is the internet connection. It's a, through a hardwire uh, uh, Ethernet, Ethernet cable. So this, you don't need to do any configuration. Just connect the cable here, connect it to the router. And then once you register in our portal, just say that you have uh, this uh, internet connection, yes. So if you have any issues and you open a ticket, we can see that you are connected to the internet and we can download the data. We can update if necessary the information in, uh, or the, the firmware in your product to, to fix any problems. And, and finally, we uh, finish with the DC connections. You don't need any kind of pins or connectors. You just say uh, this, uh, again, another cl clipping system that you, you lift to make, you lift the, um, the lever to, uh, to make, a, make a gap. And then once you close it, they lock the, place, the cables in place. Just remember the, the middle one has no use. The middle one is not grounding. The grounding is in a separate section. And we close the cover. Reminder, with the cover open, the system will not work. So remember to close it uh, tightly, properly, so the switch gets uh, activated. And then you will be able to, to switch the battery on. 
<clears throat> One of the particularities of this system is that now without any additional components, without any special components, you are able to have uh, up to three of the high voltage batteries in parallel. They, they can, the cable in is uh, quite simple. You just make sure that you have exactly the same, same length and same section of cable for each of the batteries to make sure that there's no imbalance between them uh, and make sure that you have a communication cable. The only, thing that, the only two special things about the installation is the communication cable needs to go from, from the battery one to battery two and from battery two to battery three. So using the, these bottom ports and in the middle battery, you will need to uh, change the, one of the position of the deep switches. It's only in the middle battery. So if you have two batteries, you won't need to do this. It's only if you have three batteries, you'll have to have this, uh, uh, this deep switch changed. Okay, and finally, your commissioning. This is uh, uh, one addition that we, we got into the, the premium batteries. And very important, the sequence that we do things. So the inverter must be off and for, for whatever reason, maybe you have the system, the inverter has been running with PV first because the battery maybe was not compatible yet when you bought it. Uh, really need to make sure that the inverter is switched off before you uh, assemble the battery. So uh, it, can, it can cause a bit of a communication issue. It might not let you, it will probably not let you do the commissioning. So make sure the inverter is off. Then you switch on the battery. You do the commissioning in the app. Uh, and finally, when the battery says that it's waiting for an inverter, then you can switch on the inverter and commission in the inverter. So the BeConnect app is both in an Android uh, and in, in Apple and in iOS. So you use this, you can use this, or you can use the BeConnect, which I'll show you later to do the configuration. And one thing that is a very important reminder is download the firmware in advance before going to site. And uh, whenever you have good internet, download the firmware and make sure that you download the firmware every time you go to an installation. Uh, it's true that maybe today you, you, down, you do the one commission and it's good, but as you, as you know from the electronics point, point of view, there are many, many reasons why... Oh, so somebody has unmuted themselves. Okay, sorted. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, as you know from any, any electronics, firmware updates are always critical. So make sure that you download the latest one before going to site so you update the, the, the firmware of the, of the battery once you are doing the installation. Uh, connect the, you connect to the battery Wi-Fi and you'll see it clearly as it's called a BYD. And yeah, update, update the firmware. And then the commission system, the commissioning part itself is it's about a minute. So the firmware update might take five to ten minutes. So you can wait until that that's done, and then afterwards you do the the commissioning, which is about four five, four, five steps. So co uh, confirm the, the date and time, uh, select the the product, select the the inverter brand that you're using, and finally select the is it on grid, off grid, uh, or is it single phase or three phase. Okay, um, one thing that, that we added to the high voltage system in, in the, in the, from the premium is the LED, LED uh, indicator. So whenever you have any issues or you see something that abnormal, the first thing to observe is the LED. And in the manual, you have the explanation of each of them. So you'll have white and you have blue. And in general, white is good, blue means that something is happening. So once you have a blue sequence, We'll mention this in the, in the service guideline. Count the amount of times that you get a blue light because that will tell you the, the type of, a, of error or type of fault that you're observing in the unit. So it will help you pinpoint where, where is the error quite easily. And the final aspect to take into consideration, if you have, if you add in a, a module later on for any, any reason, uh, the batteries are delivered from the factory at 30 percent between 25 and 30 percent of SOC. So they are produced at 30 percent, and during transportation, they always lose a little bit of, a, of capacity. So always between 25 and 30 percent. As these batteries are connected in series, make sure that the system is always uh, between 25 and 30 percent. 30 percent is safe to uh, put the state of charge of the system. 
the, this one would definitely will, will avoid you a lot of problems. Again, these are batteries put in series, so the same current is going through the, all, the, all the modules. So make sure that they are put at the same SOC if you don't want to lose capacity uh, in the system.